I'd like to go over old foundations now. Old foundations are a serious concern for some people, but if you think about what a foundation is supposed to do, there are two things. It's supposed to hold the house up against gravity, and it's supposed to resist earthquakes. Now, in almost all cases, even if it's a brick foundation, even if it's a crack foundation, it's probably holding the house up just fine. The other issue is how will it perform in an earthquake? In an earthquake, all earthquake forces end up in the foundation. They get transferred into the bolts, which then go into the foundation. And we want to make sure that it can do that. In 1992, the Structural Engineers Association of Southern California did some tests on old foundations, old low quality foundations. And what they discovered is that old foundations performed just as well as new foundations. And the reason for this being that when a house is bolted to the foundation, you have the bolt that goes through the mudsill, that's the bottom of the house, into the concrete. And the earthquake force attacks all of those things. It will attack the bolt, it will attack the redwood mudsill, and it will also attack the concrete. Now of all those three things, one of them is going to fail, and invariably they found that the wood failed. So because the wood failed, you know, there's no reason to reinforce the concrete, there's no reason to put in a bigger bolt. The main thing to look at is reinforcing the bolt to wood connection, and that's what we worry about. And even when that is as strong as it can possibly be, um, that will still be the thing that fails before the concrete, because concrete is so strong even when it's weak concrete. So right here is a photograph of a house where the ground is touching the siding. You will often see in uh, inspection reports something about the earth to wood contact. So this is the wood side of the house, here's the earth. And what they're concerned about is that the earth is touching the wood and that this can cause deterioration, decay, and rot in the framing of the house. So what they often recommend is that you put in a foundation cap. And what that means is you put a new segment of concrete on top of the existing foundation. So here's an example of that. So here's our old foundation right here. Then they put this large, large segment of new foundation. And what they did here is this cripple wall right here, it used to sit right here, much closer to the dirt. The dirt is on the outside. So what they did is they extended the foundation up right here, and now it's holding the cripple wall in the house up probably a foot taller than it used to be. This is a very expensive enterprise. I mean, you can imagine how much this foundation work would be. You'd have to cut off the bottom of the house uh, to allow a space to put the concrete. You have to shore it up so the house doesn't collapse. And, you know, the concrete, the concrete pump, all the steel, et cetera, et cetera, this would easily get into the tens and tens of thousands of dollars. There's another way to do it, which I'd like to show you right now. And this is the way they do it in Northern California. I lived up there for a while and they do not do foundation caps. They do this system and you'll see how cheap it is and common sense it is. So what they do first is they'll dig out a trench, which is what we have right here. And then they drive in two pieces of uh, plastic piping. So the plastic pipe probably costs about $3. And this is just a matter of some of your labor and a shovel. So that's all you need on this part of it. So then what they do is they take some pressure treated wood right here. You want to use ground contact pressure treated wood, probably lasts 100 years. And then you butt it up against the pieces of plastic so over here and over here. You don't even need to nail it or anything. You just butt it up against. And then you put your dirt back in right here up against the pressure treated wood. Now you have an air gap right here in between the house and the pressure treated wood. There's an air gap, the dirt is no longer touching the house, and you no longer have that problem. This probably costs, you know, three hours of your labor and $50 in material max, as opposed to tens and tens of thousands of dollars. And this is the way we recommend that you do it. So here I'd like to go into something called a rotated foundation. A rotated foundation, as you can see right here, is when a foundation starts to rotate. So what causes that is the ground is pushed on by the house. So here's the house right here. It's pushing down on the ground. And if right in here it becomes moist, the inside of the crawl space right here is drier than on the outside, and it'll just sort of smush down into the softer part. This is caused by poor drainage. 
So the way you fix this and prevent it in the future is all you do is you get in and you find out, well, what's the drainage problem? It's probably downspouts. It might be old drainage systems. And you just need to fix that and you'll be done. Most of the houses we look at have foundations like this. The movement probably was arrested 10 or 20 years ago when they had uh, poor drainage. So we look at the downspouts and the gutters and if they've been replaced, this, this, this pretty much stops. So I'd like to go into brick foundations. We don't have too many brick foundations anymore. Most of them have been replaced, but some haven't. And this is a remarkable case on a house in San Francisco that we did in which the brick foundation was evaluated by a existing materials evaluation service. And they told us that this brick foundation would perform just fine in an earthquake and we could go ahead and bolt directly to it. So that's what we did. That's unusual. But sometimes the brick is, uh, the quality is so good that you can actually use a brick foundation for a seismic retrofit and build your shear walls and bolts, et cetera. In this foundation, on the other hand, this foundation obviously needs something. It needs to be replaced or it needs to be addressed in some other way. So I'd like to show you the way we address it, which is certainly the most cost-effective way to do it. So what we do in these cases is we put new foundation on the inside in the crawl space. So this is a new foundation, this is a new foundation, this is a new foundation, this is a new foundation. So we put in this new foundation and then we put shear walls, the green lines are the shear walls that have the bolts and the shear transfer ties and the other things we talked about in our cripple wall retrofits video. So we don't have to do anything to the foundation itself. We don't disturb it in any way. And the nice thing about that is these historical houses, it maintains the character that they originally had when they were built. So if you have an old Victorian with a brick foundation, it's nice if you can just keep it, if you're trying to preserve the house and put it back the way it was when it was, when it was new, uh, which is often the case. These old beautiful houses are, are certainly worth preserving in their original condition. So what we do in these cases is we make sure that the amount of concrete and the strength of the shear walls is sufficient to resist the anticipated ground acceleration that the building code tells us. So for example, if we need to resist 10,000 pounds of force along here, we make sure that our foundation can resist that and our shear wall can resist that. Once we do that, our house is retrofitted and we don't have to mess around with all the other foundations. Works just as well as if we had replaced it, but a lot cheaper. Okay, now this isn't for brick foundations. This is for old crumbly foundations. And in these cases, what you do is you put the bolts very close together. So along here, you'll see them probably every foot apart. And then our shear wall, let's just say the shear wall is way down in an end. We make sure that that shear wall is connected to all those bolts. And the way we do that is here's our mud sill down this way where all the bolts are connected. We make sure that there are no breaks in the mud sill. We take steel straps. We do whatever we have to do to make sure that this is just one long continuous piece that's attached to the shear wall. When the shear wall moves, it transfers to all those bolts, which then transfers to the entire foundation. And even if it's a weak foundation, if you can transfer all the force into the entire foundation, you'll still be in pretty good shape. Again, this is to avoid replacing a foundation because that can be so expensive. Now let's go into foundation cracks. This is a fairly large crack. Cracked foundations are fairly common in the Bay Area. And this is because the soil in our area is uh, expansive or clay soil. And what that means is when it becomes wet, it expands. And when it becomes dry, it retracts. And that movement causes cracks. So this is something that can be addressed if you wish. And I personally don't think it's a big issue. Uh, you can go ahead and retrofit without uh, addressing the cracks. But if you want to, this is one of the repairs that you might want to follow. This is called a bench pier. Now on a bench pier, what you do is you dig out underneath the crack. Once you're done with that, you dig a hole. Then you drill some holes in the foundation itself. And that's for some rebar that's coming up. And then right here, you put the rebar in. So you put steel to make sure that the new concrete that's gonna go in is attached to the old concrete. So this is a piece of rebar, a piece of rebar. These are rebar is just steel rods. And then you just fill the hole full of concrete. We're not worried about the foundation moving on either side of the crack. So that will stabilize the crack and keep it from expanding. I hope the information in this video has helped you understand more about seismic retrofitting and how to protect your own home. We're producing more videos, and if you would like to know when they are available, please click the subscribe button. Thank you.